What's going on everybody? If you follow me on Instagram, you already know what this video is going to be on, but I figured it'd be a good time to do this one while it's still fresh and kind of hitting the media pretty hard. We all know, and if you don't, you're about to find out, Carl Lentz uh, was found to be in a little love affair. They're calling his tequila drenched love affair. So it got a whole bunch of attention, obviously, because we've got another big name pastor from a huge name church who has seemingly fallen from his huge position of prominence and power within that church, within the Christian faith in general. Um, and now he's having a very hard time. Him and his family are both having a very hard time. So what I did was I took a news clip, I chopped it up into little pieces, and I'm basically just gonna kind of make comments or reply to certain sections of that news clip, things that I think you guys care about, things that I think are kind of main points when we're talking about topics like this, because he's not the first pastor to fall and have an affair. Um, it's actually kind of common. It's a pretty common transgression for pastors that we've seen throughout history. Uh, so we're going to hit it. We're going to talk about it. It's going to be nice. It's going to be friendly. We're not calling him out. We're not talking shit about him. We're definitely not going to talk shit about his family or even the mistress who stars in this news clip that I've got for you guys. It's a news clip of an interview with her. And I'm not a huge fan of her or her responses, but even her, we're not going to flame and we're not going to talk shit about. So... We gotta jump right in. Before we do all that, real quick, all the dumb stuff. If you haven't subscribed here on YouTube, please consider doing that, it helps me out a lot. Plus, I'll be putting these videos out at least once a week, but hopefully twice. Other than YouTube, just Instagram is really the only place you need to be. So make sure you follow me on there because that's where everybody votes on the topics every week, and that is where we kinda have some actual in-depth discussion. So YouTube, Instagram, do it. Let's get started. Did he tell you he loved you? Yes, he did. Did you love him? And I was like, are you married? And he said, I am, but he doesn't wear a ring. So the first thing that's kind of problematic is just the fact that he did tell her that he loved her and that she loved him. That kind of tells us that there was some substance to this relationship, that it wasn't just kind of a, you know, an oops, a mistake. The other thing that kind of bothered me is the fact that he never wore a ring, at least from what she says. Uh, he wasn't wearing a ring and he never really wore a ring. To me, that kind of screams almost premeditation. Like you, you have to intentionally take the ring off when you know you're gonna go somewhere where you could possibly meet someone. Like obviously we don't have all the details of why he had his ring off and everything like that, but that just kind of stood out to me. That's something that uh, could be bothersome because it could mean that he kind of had a plan to go find somebody to step out of his marriage with. Either way, it kind of shows the condition of his heart for both those things, the I love you, as well as intentionally not wearing a ring. It shows that, that condition of his heart has been pretty poor. So obviously there's something going on, there was something going on, and I'm sure it wasn't just a snap thing that happened. I bet he's been on kind of a downward slope for a while. So those are things you just kind of need to keep in your head when you're going over stuff like this. It doesn't sound like it was a snap decision mistake. It kind of sounds like there was a foundational problem that just kind of tended to unravel for him until it got to a point of basically no return. When he told you he was married for 17 years and had three kids, did you think, I can't be with him, I can't date him? Or did you think, I'm okay with that? I was like, it's all good. I was married before. And it's all good. I was married before. What does that even mean? It's all good. Like that it's all good that she helped dismantle this man's life and his family. That it's all good she'd be a part of him falling from a very prominent position of power within the Christian faith, like what exactly is all good? It's a sad thing that more people in a situation like that aren't like, hmm, do I really want to tear this dude's family apart? Huh, do I really want to make him lose his job? Knowing his values because of what his job is and what his involvement is in the world, which is very heavily faith-based and Christian-based, it's so bothersome that somebody knowing that about him and knowing he's got this beautiful wife and three kids is just like, uh, you know, it's all good. I've been married before. I didn't want to judge him because I was like, you don't go and just sticker, put stickers on people and think they're going to be that and going to be this. And I didn't want to do that to him because I didn't want to judge him. I'm sorry, but what the hell is she even talking about? She didn't want to judge him? This section, I had no idea what the hell she was replying to because what she was asked, her response doesn't really make any damn sense. Like she didn't want to judge him by acknowledging the fact that he was married. Is that the label she's talking about? Is that the sticker that she's talking about? Because that's a sticker that he signed up for, like legally, morally, and spiritually. Her saying that she doesn't want to label him or put a sticker on him doesn't really change the fact that he signed up for and absolutely has a huge label blasted on him that is marriage. 
And if you want to add to it, he's got another big label that says pastor. They began what she calls a consensual affair, in spite of what she thought were red flags, including him telling her not to Google him, saving her number in the notes app instead of his contact list, and refusing to tell her his last name or what he did for a living. First things first, what the hell is a consensual affair as opposed to what? A non-consensual affair? Where like one of you doesn't want to be having the affair, but the one does want to be having, like how does that work? You know what I mean? Practically, how does that work? But regardless of any of that, we've got a bunch of red flags again. Hiding the phone number and the notes app on his phone. We've got the don't Google me comment that he gave to her. And then we've got the whole, you can't have my last name, therefore you can't Google me thing going on. Now there's a bunch of things wrong with that. The one thing that sticks out for me just because of the way I think is if you tell somebody not to Google you, I feel like the first thing they're gonna do is Google you. And she's gonna find out what your last name is. Like it's only a matter of time. We live in the age of the internet. Everything's on the internet. Everybody's easy to find. She could have taken a picture of him and then uploaded it to one of those image searching websites and the, the internet, the webernet would have immediately thrown up a million pictures of him on stage at Hillsong or other churches doing his pastoral duties. At any rate, just like I said in the first comment, it's troublesome to me because it seems kind of like a systemic issue. Doesn't seem like a snap decision mistake. Sounds like it's something he really has thought out. Sounds like something he's maybe done before. Sounds like a systemic issue, which is really, really sad. I realized that he's the pastor from Hillsong and I was like, oh, I was at this church like six years ago. You had been to Hillsong? One time, only one time. Now this isn't important or anything at all. But just the way she says that, like one time, just one time, kind of screams to me like bold face lie. I don't know what that means within this context, but if I'm being honest, every time I listen to that, I'm like, she is a lying. That is a lie. I think she had a clue who he was, but that's total speculation and it doesn't matter anyways. But just a thought. And I told him, I know who you are and I'm not here to judge you. Like there's something wrong with your marriage that you sitting here with me? He said, no. It's like, it's you. Obviously the first troubling thing right there is that he said no. Usually an affair comes from the root of having either emotional or physical needs not being met within your marriage or your relationship. That's usually the cause of an affair in the first place. So the fact that he's telling her that there's nothing wrong with his marriage, that he's like satisfied in his marriage, is kind of troubling. It would make you curious like why then? Is it impulsive? Because something impulsive that seems to also be pretty well planned out or again like something that maybe has happened before, it just, uh, I don't know, it doesn't quite add up. But either way, this is why it's super important to be constantly filling your marriage up. I always like to say that a marriage doesn't ever stand still. Like a marriage is not capable of standing still. You're either moving forward in a positive direction or you're moving backward in a negative direction. Because I believe a marriage that is stale or stagnant or standing still is actually going in a negative direction. So it's really important to be like constantly filling your marriage with whatever you can. Because whenever that stops, one of you will get complacent or one of you will get lonely or one of you will just not be having your needs met. And so what tends to happen, not always, but obviously a lot of the time, is that individual who's not getting their needs met, they will subconsciously or consciously, they'll get them met somewhere else. Kareem says she tried to break the relationship off several times, but that lens kept coming back to her. Excuse me, but how do you try to end an affair? Did he not allow her to end the affair? Like, was he forcing things? I just, I don't see that as the reality. If she wanted out of the affair, she would have just gotten out of the affair. That's my opinion. It's a personal opinion. Uh, but I don't, I can't think of any other reason. I very, very, very much doubt Carl Lentz forced the affair after she had tried to end it several times. Uh, I don't see that as a reality. Who knows? But I very much doubt that he continued to force this affair on this woman. If she wanted out of the affair, she probably would have gotten the hell out of the affair until late October when she says his wife Laura found out about their alleged affair. My wife, he was in the hallway, you can hear he was in the hallway, he's like, my wife found out, and I was like, I was devastated. 
This whole clip honestly makes me sick to my stomach. The fact that she's smiling like she is and the fact that her devastation is not for the wife, it's not for the kids, it's for her and the fact that the affair is over, which makes you think back to that last point of her trying to end the affair over and over. Somebody who tries to constantly end an affair but is being basically affair forced by the other party does then not get devastated when that person's wife finds out and the affair comes to a screeching halt. So there you go. No logic, no rationale. She's a liar, in my opinion. It's a personal opinion. I'm allowed to have it, but I think she's lying about stuff. The next month, Hillsong firing him, citing several reasons, including, quote, moral failures. So let's talk about the moral failures for a minute, because on Instagram, tons of you guys were bringing really good information, talking about basically why the church should come around him right now instead of removing themselves from him. Now, I completely agree with you guys. The church should come around people who are struggling. They should not pull away from them. So there's a couple things that we have to try to think about. Like, why did the church do that? It seems counterproductive. It seems counter-Christian. Is there something else going on that justifies the church's behavior in pulling back from him and choosing to fire him instead? So let's get into those couple of things that may or may not justify the church's reaction to it. You guys can decide for yourselves. The first thing is that this was not Carl's first transgression. It was not his first transgression of this kind, nor was it his second, nor was it his third. When Hillsong was asked for a statement about some of the stuff, here were a couple of things they said. The first thing was that some of the staff at Hillsong, as well as the founder, said that Carl seemed to have this tendency to lie, and sometimes to lie for what seemed like no reason. So we would call that compulsive lying. And I believe the second one is tied to that. It would make sense to me at least. Other church staffers that had worked with him would say that it was almost impossible to carry like a serious, meaningful conversation with him because he would almost always get really defensive, like almost immediately. And that's pretty common behavior from somebody who has a problem with lying consistently or who has that lie compulsion just kind of ingrained in them is that they're going to immediately get defensive whenever you try to come at them about anything. Now the last comment that Hillsong made was about his narcissism and they used that word which is pretty serious um, but it kind of makes sense if you look at the big picture of all this and then for them specifically like they know him intimately. They deal with him on an intimate like casual normal level day to day. So they see things that you and I would never see within his character, his values, his integrity. So they said that he had narcissistic tendencies and that honestly, they had just kind of gotten out of control. It was the last straw and something finally had to be done with him. Hillsong has now begun an investigation into the culture of the church, but Kareem says Lentz's rising celebrity may have contributed to his behavior. Now that makes me really happy, assuming they actually do that. These mega churches where pastors almost double as celebrities need to have some serious strongholds in place to kind of be able to combat this issue and really to stop it before it ever starts. But definitely to have some stuff in place, like ready to go, functional, for this type of issue so that if something happens like this, it can be addressed properly, it can be addressed quickly, and they can kind of see what the problem was, how they can avoid it next time, and grow and learn from this failure. I mean, the sad reality is that the higher we put these pastors on a pedestal within Celebrity Town, uh, the harder and more dramatic and drastic they're going to fall if or when something does happen. And then the other reality that people don't seem to be talking about is the more drastic and damaging of the fall, the more drastic and damaged the congregation under that leader is going to be. Like the congregation at Hillsong has been seriously damaged by this happening. But because that church is so big and because Carl Lentz is so big and he's spoken all over the place, um, everybody's kind of super thrown off by this. It was a big shot to the entire like faith community to see this happen, to try to understand and grasp what happened, why it happened, all that, but he was so high up there and now he is so far down. And that's something I'm not gonna get crazy about, but I think is wrong to begin with. And I love that a lot of you guys commented that on Instagram, that his sin isn't worse than anybody else's. If somebody in a little church in you know, Chicago, Illinois, fell from an affair 
it's not going to make the media. It's not going to be talked about all over Instagram. Like their lives aren't going to be wrecked to nearly the same degree that somebody like Carl Lentz's life got wrecked from this, but it is the same identical sin. And that is obviously a huge problem within the faith and just within the world that if a celebrity falls, it's a huge deal. But if somebody else falls, it's not really a huge deal. It's the power, the prominence. It's how many people, like how big the audience of that individual is when that person falls, how many people does it affect? That's the only thing that really makes it different. In my opinion, the sin is the same. Nobody's as greater than anybody else's. And sin in general is the same. No sin is greater than any other sin. But the problem comes in to what is the damage from that sin? What is the damage outside of you from that sin? And the problem with something like this is there was huge damage to that church individually. There was huge damage to that family, the wife and the children. And there's been huge damage to an entire faith community because of how big and how highly held this guy was. Is there anything that you would like her to know? Anything you would like to say to her if she were to listen? I feel bad for her. You know, woman to a woman, I don't think she, she deserved to, to be hurt. She didn't deserve to be hurt. Well, damn right. So maybe you should have labeled or stickered him married like he signed up for because he signed off with the state he signed off with the church and he signed off with god so that he could carry the label of married and you saying you don't want to sticker or label him is why she's in pain like that's i mean it's part of obviously he carries a lot of responsibility but from her end her part she chose this she didn't want to label him married because she'd been married before, whatever the fuck that means. But she didn't want to label him married. But now, because this wife is hurting now, she's seen some damage come from it. She's like, oh, well, you know, I didn't mean to hurt her. I didn't mean to hurt her. Well, you should have labeled him married because then that means hands off. It just bothers me because earlier in this news video, uh, she's talking about how she really questioned him about his marital status. She knew about his kids. Like, she went through all this stuff. She questioned him about a bunch of stuff. Like when she asked him, you know, are you unhappy in your marriage? Is that why you're doing this? To which he replied, no. Like she also, just like him, had put a lot of thought into this. Like she had been invested in finding out about his marriage. And then she talks about being devastated when the wife finds out. That devastation being selfish for her and the fact that the affair is ending. Even though she tried to end the affair a bunch of times from what she says, she was still devastated, which makes no damn sense, but we'll let it slide. Now here in the end, she's talking about how she didn't mean to hurt the wife. It's just ridiculous. So she went so far as to ask all these questions about his marital status, how happy he was in his marriage. And then at the end here, she's kind of doubling back and being like, oh, well, you know, I feel really bad. I didn't mean to hurt her. Like you did. You did. Because eventually you're going to get caught. And that wife is going to be devastated, especially because this woman that he had the affair with, she came to realize who he was pretty quickly, like what his position was. Obviously, she already knew about his whole family situation. So she knew a lot. She knew enough that anybody with some decency would be like, no, no, no. But she did not do that. Now, we tried to reach out to Carl Lentz to respond. He had no comment. I was honestly pretty let down that Carl Lentz did not comment on this. Now, he may have given comment to another news station. He may have given comment somewhere else. I wasn't able to really find anything. The only place I was able to find him making any sort of comment on was on Instagram. He made a big post. It's his last, most recent post if you go to his page right now at least. Uh, he did write a pretty long kind of thing there. I wish he had done more. I wish he had explained more, uh, but it is what it is. Now, does he owe the world? Does he owe us an apology? Like, no, he owes his family an apology. He owes God an apology, uh, but he doesn't really owe us an apology. What I would have liked to see, like I would have liked to see this part of his character come out is like an explanation. Because kind of like we've talked about, man, this guy was huge. This guy has seriously, seriously impacted people's lives in amazing ways. Now, people who are not very strong in their faith, who are not very strong in their self-esteem, things like that, these people are going to struggle because of this. There are going to be some people who abandon their faith. There are going to be some people who have some serious personal issues because of this. And it comes back to what we've already talked about. He's not special. He's not great. He's not actually a celebrity like in the eyes of God. He just has a lot of prominence. He has a lot of power and he has a huge audience.
But what comes with that is like an enormous amount of responsibility because you got tons of eyes on you. People who had come to faith, like come to Christ because of his intervention, because of maybe a sermon he gave, because of something to do with music, because of a personal conversation. Regardless, people who are young in their faith, people who are kind of weak in their faith, and I don't mean that in a bad way, or people who have that poor self-esteem, like I already mentioned, like some people are going to seriously, seriously struggle because of this fall. So what I would have liked to see is have him kind of come out and give us all just a comment as an explanation, kind of where he was at, what he's going through. It's like, it's really important when somebody in that position of prominence and power they make a huge mistake there's a bunch of damage that follows and then you get to see their heart and their integrity and their character get laid out where they admit to the wrongdoing they try to explain kind of where their heart was at at the time what went wrong what didn't work what you tried what you're going to do moving forward like there's a lot of things i just really 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 would have loved to hear him talk about and i do think he owes us that and the only reason i'm saying that is because of the stuff i've already said i feel like there's going to be some serious struggle for certain uh, demographics within Christianity. And I wish that he would think about that. And I wish that he would do what I believe is his responsibility as somebody who had a huge voice, as somebody who was always on the stage being listened to, being watched. I believe it is his responsibility to kind of give an explanation, not an apology, but an explanation so that some of these weaker uh, in their faith people or people with poor self-esteem, all this stuff I've already said, so that those people kind of have something to intake and be like, okay, can I rationalize why, you know, he's not perfect, he's going to make mistakes, it's okay, and now he's explained kind of what happened, where his head was at, blah, blah, blah. I would have really, really liked to see that, but what are you going to do? What do you guys think? What do you guys think of this woman? I think she is lying about some stuff. I don't think she's lying about anything significant enough that like she's making him look way worse than he is or anything like that. I don't think she's lying about the affair or anything like that, but I, I do believe she's like, I believe she's not telling the truth about some of the stuff when you get into some of the details. Like how many times she been to Hillsong Church, that came off to me as like a huge lie. But I would love to hear what you guys think about that. So after you watch this, maybe go watch the full video where I didn't chop it up and kind of just tell me what you think. I'm curious. What do you guys think his next move is? Like if you were Carl Lentz, all of this just happened, what would your next move be? What would you think the right thing to do? He's already been fired. You know, he's already come out and did a little something on Instagram to kind of tell a story, although it wasn't exhaustive at all. It wasn't a real good explanation at all. But what do you think his next move should be? What would you do if you were him? And then lastly, what do you guys think about the sin scale? When we're talking about, say, if I had an affair and Carl Lentz had an affair and then some dude that nobody really knew other than his very close circle of friends, but he was a Christian, had an affair. Do you believe sin is kind of on the scale that's contingent upon what your audience is, how much prominence you have, what your position in the church is, or do you think sin is just this flat line? Like sin for him is sin for me is sin for Carl Lentz. Now, as you've listened and watched this, if there are any principles or topics within this video, within this specific to Carl Lentz situation that you think we should do a specific video on outside of Carl Lentz's personal life stuff, then throw that in the comments or message me on Instagram. I'll add it to the list that you guys are going to vote on in the next day or so. And then we'll do kind of a more a more broad under that specific topic video of like the sin scale, stuff like that. All right, well, that's it. I love you guys. I hope you have an awesome day. I'm going to be posting that topic list tomorrow probably for you guys to pick on the next video. And I am going to try to pump out another video from the topic list from your votes later this week instead of waiting until all the way till next week.